Hello, brothers and sisters. We're back again for another episode in Letter from Lockdown, looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians. In chapter 1 and verses 9 to 11, he writes these words, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best, and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the praise and glory of God. Paul writes these words to brothers and sisters in Christ, people who've been brought together under God as a family. And like many another family, they experience tensions and difficulties. That's what always happens when sinners are brought together in close proximity. So there were sometimes quarrels amongst them. There was selfishness, there were inflated egos, things that we're very familiar with in our own daily life, but things that get highlighted during a time of lockdown when we're put together so closely uh, and 24 seven, there we are on top of one another. Uh, maybe some of you are experiencing real tensions at the moment because of this, and you're getting ratty with one another, getting snappy. It's coming out in all sorts of ugly ways. Perhaps some of you would say, in all honesty, Eddie, I feel a failure. I'm supposed to be a Christian, and yet I struggle living even with my own family. Look, if that's you, I want to encourage you, do not run from God because of your shame run to God, because Jesus did not come into the world and live and die and rise again to shame you. He came to rescue you and to redeem you. So how does the gospel help us in this situation? Well, Paul prays, and what he prays is interesting. My instinct would be to pray, Lord, please give us less pressure. But that's not how Paul prays. Instead of praying for less pressure, he prays for more love. You see, I want the easy way. Paul wants the growth way. And the growth way means more love. And because love is about growing, Paul prays for a love that is discerning, a love that will abound in more knowledge, more depth of insight, that will be discerning. Uh, love, you see, is not an empty sentiment. Really important to recognize this. I meet so many people who say to me things like, oh, my God is a loving God. I believe in a God of love. And they believe in nothing of the sort. What they mean is, my God doesn't mind what I do. My God doesn't mind what anybody does. My God doesn't even care if I'm completely indifferent to him. Hey, that's not love. Any parent who behaved that way towards their child would not be a loving parent would not be a good parent. No, love means growing in knowledge and insight. Love means becoming more discerning. And why does Paul want us to be more discerning? Well, it's not so that we can have big heads. It's so that we can have beautiful lives, be pure and blameless to the day of Christ Jesus. And why does he want us to have beautiful lives? Is it so that we can take a picture of ourselves and slap it on Instagram and say, there, everybody, look at me. Aren't I beautiful? Aren't I amazing? No, it's got nothing to do with praise for us. He wants us to have beautiful lives so that God will get the glory. Why God? Because he's the one who changes us. We don't rescue ourselves. We're rescued by the grace of God and therefore the glory goes to the one who rescued us. Now that's what Paul prays for people who are under pressure, people who are struggling with their relationships. He prays for more love, which abounds in knowledge and discernment, so that they can live more beautiful lives to the praise and glory of God. Now is that what you want? Is that what you want for yourself? Is it what you want for your family? Is it what you want for your church. Before you rush to say yes, we can all do that, we know it's the right answer, the answer we should give, just stop and think, is it what you really want? Just as I'm asking myself, is that what I really want? Because you see, I find the evidence of my life suggests that actually 
you probably really want something else. Here's a little test for you. Think of the times that you got frustrated or angry during the past month or, or during the past week, a month's a long time, or, or maybe even the times you got frustrated and angry today. Just think of those times. Let me ask you this question. How much of your frustration or your anger had anything at all to do with the kingdom of God? Were you angry because people were breaking God's laws? I suspect you were angry because they were breaking your laws. It wasn't that God's kingdom was, wasn't coming, and that was making you angry. It, it was that your kingdom wasn't coming. Your will wasn't being done. At least that's what I find in my own heart, and I'm guessing that you're just like me. Now, if you recognize that about yourself, then this is not a moment of shame. This is a moment of grace. Because God is answering that prayer for a growth in discernment. He is showing us what our hearts are really like. Never mind the faults of all those people that you live with. Your biggest problem is not them. Your biggest problem is inside of you. It is the sin that is within you. And the one person you cannot run away from is yourself. You need rescue from yourself, as I need rescue from myself. And God gives us that rescue in Jesus Christ. This is a moment, not for running away from God, but for running to him for the grace that we need for forgiveness and for change. Brothers and sisters, keep returning to this truth when you get it wrong. Don't use the grace of God ever as an excuse for sinning, just not caring how you treat other people. But when you do get it wrong, when you lose patience with your husband, your wife, your kids, your elderly relative, the people that you live with as housemates, the people that you work with, when you blow it, when you make it all about you and what you want and how people shouldn't get in the way of what you want and your desires and you're at the center of it all. When that happens, be quick to run to God for forgiveness and help. Just humble yourself before God and then humble yourself before other people. Be the first one to say sorry. Be the first one to ask for forgiveness and be quick to forgive other people as God in Christ has forgiven you. And perhaps above all, enjoy the knowledge of God's grace, that he's incredibly patient and that he hasn't finished with any of us yet. Come on, let's pray together now. Father God, we pray for a love for you and for others that will be greater than the love that we have for ourselves. Help us to see why your way is so much better than our way and teach us to run quickly to Jesus, our rescuer, for forgiveness and for help. And please, by the power of your Holy Spirit, change our lives. Make them something beautiful for your praise and glory. Amen. Who do you need to say sorry to? Go and say it now. The peace of the Lord be with you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Bye for now.